Hey everybody, this is Dr. Anna, and this is the third segment of the early Paleozoic. Uh, I finished the last segment exactly at the eocrinoids. These are like the prekinoids, but they have every kind of uh, characteristic for the crinoids. Um, these are the, the very uh, well-known fossils of the crinoid fossils. This here is a very famous fossil of the, Arche uh, the Cambrian. Uh, it's called the Archaeosiatids. And these guys are part of the um, Porifera. And they make coral-like structures and they build rifts, actually. And they can grow up to 150 millimeter. Uh, as I said, they are very, very important reef builder. The next group we have to talk about is the early mollusks. Uh, they basically were very um, unimportant, but then they becoming more and more important as time goes on. Remember, we are talking about uh, the early bivalves, actually. There is a very famous uh, fossil assembly during the Cambrian, and this is the so-called Burgess uh, Shale, which is... Uh, represents Middle Cambrian and it's found in the Rocky Mountains. This is another place where in black shale um, soft-bodied animals get preserved as impression. Uh, these, these animals are actually very uh, interesting looking as you can see on this figure right here. Bit crazy. Um, now we are on the Ordovician. Uh, during the Ordovician, we have a very important, very new niche, which is uh, unfilled, and that is the reef. Uh, and it, as you know, the reef facious is very close to the surface, so it's very, very high energy usually. And uh, most of the time, these are the areas where you've got the highest diversity. And on the reef, there is always very many different type of animal. Uh, what is really important other than the reefs, the brachiopods, they are more abundant. Uh, the graptolites are very, very important because they are the best index fossils in the Ordovician. We have the real corals, this time the rugos and the tabulate corals. We have very important bryozoans, which are reef builders along with the, the um, corals. Uh, we have nautolite, nautolites, which are important gastropods. And we're going to have the first fish during this time. So these are the brachiopods. And remember, I already kind of told you that they are marine animals. They are shallow to deep water. They live in shallow to deep water. Um, they have, I already mentioned, this very typical bilateral symmetry. So uh, this is one um, valve. And in through the valve, there is a there is a symmetric plane right there. So it's the two. And remember, when they die, their muscle actually clutches them together, so they will always be formed together. They will never fall apart, like the like the bivalves. And these are the famous graptolites. Uh, the graptolites are actually. Uh, Marine, they are planktonic, so they live as plankton, and they you will find them in any depth, any temperature. They usually live in colonies, and they have multiple ca caps and central central rod, like right here, right here. That's the central rod, and these are the multiple caps, just like that. So those are each individual right there. Um, and each each cap holds tiny, teeny, tiny animals, and these are the time periods when they are very important in index fossils. The next group is the corals. I already kind of started to mention you the tabulate and rugose coral. The they both are marine, of course. They they all uh, occur in in tropical environments. The
the tabulate corals are mostly uh, reef builders or colonial but as the rugos on the right this guy can actually be individual like this one and colonial like this one so this guy can do both they are very very active reef builders they can build as high reef as 50 meter um, they can actually survive all the way to 90 90 meter which is like times three if you want it in feet um, they have calcium carbonate skeletons and inside these there are individuals these little polyps like the individual animals in in here are the polyps and these guys are the bryozoans as you can see the bryozoans have been living since the ordovician and they almost completely died out in the permian but now they are around anyways uh they are primarily marine animals usually very very shallow water depth they will occur around any temperature. They will actually leave colonial, like this one here, like lace. Looks like lace if you look up close by. Um, they can also live individually. And um, this, the, the zoids and the size of the little zoids, just like the polyps and the corals are like less than one millimeter. This guy is actually boring because they reproduce asexually. The next group is the Nautiloid. This is my wine for tonight and I'm soon going to sleep. Uh, the Nautiloid uh, belongs to the phylum mollusk along with the bivalves and the gastropods. Um, their char characteristic is that they are marine. Uh, they like shallow depth, but I know some nautiloids go to deeper too. Uh, they have cone-shaped shell, right here, this is that. And then later they actually start to uh, roll up like that. But at the beginning they were straight like the orthoceras. Um, carnivores, they are carnivores. And they leave um, from Ordovician to all the way to the Holocene. There is only one surviving species. And these guys are the gastropods. The gastropods, uh, of course, started in the in the early, I mean, the later part of the Cambrian. And they are still around, of course. A lot of them, actually, they are the most diverse ever right now. Uh, they, they like uh, marine to fresh environment. They like shallow depth. Um, they even live on land, as you know. They like all temperature, it doesn't matter. Usually they are helical. They have hollow shell from calcium carbonate. These guys are grazers. And they have a very uh, muscular single foot, foot right here. Now this one is the fish. The first fish which occurred are uh, the one which was jawless, which means it doesn't have a bone right here. So therefore they didn't, they couldn't crunch any animals. So uh, basically they were filter feeders. They like just filtered everything through their mouth and got out the good stuff. So these were absolutely harmless fish. Uh, we have to talk about uh, the mass extinction. There was a pretty uh, big mass extinction at the end of the Ordovician because of the Ice Age. Uh, at the time Gondwana moved down south so therefore it was set up for an Ice Age and it happened. The Ice Age always um, results in very rapid sea level change because as the ice builds up the sea level goes down so therefore the mar marine habitat lost their their living niches um, it wasn't huge extinction about 12 percent of the the families died out and 61 percent of all the general and the species 85 percent of the species have died mostly the brachiopods bryozoans the trilobites really bad and the graptolites so that's the end of this chapter and i will see you in the late paleozoic bye for now